gonna go for hell. You tried oh, it, didn't you? No, I really did like the dish. I thought it was stunning, so sorry, mate. Going for help. There you go. Right, up next is the head honcho <laughs> at the award winning uh, Orangey restaurant inside Rockcliffe Hall in Darlington. It's, of course, Mr. Kenny Atkinson. Great to have you back on Thank the show. You, James. Good Thank to you. have you back on the show. Right, so I know you want to get this pork yeah, straight, straight on. Yeah, straight Because this wants to get in the oven, so we'll Definitely. get this first on. We've okay. got the tenderloin of pork. Pork tenderloin, really yeah. cheap, really yeah. lean. Got a lot of fat, so I just want to get it straight in, please, James. Yeah, that's straight in the pan, first of all. So get a bit of colour on there, because you want about yeah. sort of seven minutes, yeah? Yeah, please, yeah. In the oven. So get, get a little bit of colour on there. So the name of this dish is what? Pan roast of pork tenderloin. We're going to do it with the peas pudding and some pickled baby carrots. Pickled peas baby. pudding? Peas, peas pudding. pudding. Peas pudding or peas? Peas, peas, pudding. peas pudding. Sorry, it's the accent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was, I was gentle with you. Oh, relax <laughs> down, <laughs> but you have different names for it up there. What? Well, it's, you could call it peas porridge. Yeah. Peas if, porridge? Yeah, that's another weird uh, name for it. Um, if there's two variations, you have the yellow split peas, which we tend to do with uh, as a cold um, peas pudding. Right. Also known as a uh, tiny side patty. Uh, if we do a tiny side patty. patty. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. We, we, we do it as a hot version, so we use the green split peas. Right. Can I get that in the oven, Jim? Please, that's straight in. So, anyway, I'm going to get my uh, little. This is a pea puree, not to be mistaken to what you're doing over here. So we've got the shallots, bit of garlic yep. in there, and then you want the you're going to use frozen peas for this. Yeah, I want to make a frozen pea puree just to because I'm not making a sauce, so the puree is going to act as part of the sauce. Right. So, so frozen peas can go in. See him again. Why frozen peas, Kenny? It is so better. They're picked fresh, yeah. frozen down. They're great for purees and soups. Yeah. Fresh peas is, is not the best for puree. So a little bit of mint. A lot of butter there, Kenny. A lot of butter. I thought because you didn't have butter last week, James, I thought I'd try and uh, <laughs> make up, make right. up for your fix. So a lot of butter in there. Yeah. And we're going to get the shallots and garlic chopped. Now, I'll move this out of the way because I know you want to take a little bit of bacon. Yeah, yeah, please. There you go. So I'll move that. So okay. we're going to do a hot peas pudding. Okay, I'll slice this for... Do you want this chopping up, this bacon, or just leave it? Um, just leave it whole, James. I'll have, it. I'll have it straight in the pan, actually. Okay. Let's cut that like that. I'll leave that to one side. Brilliant. So, if I was doing this in a restaurant, I'll use a ham stock to get right. that real porky, uh, hammy flavour into the sauce. But obviously, chicken stock with some streaky bacon is absolutely fine. Yeah. Sorry. Now, we're doing these carrots in there as well. So yeah, we're going to do a little pickling liquor. Which explain is to us what we got in here, the so liquor. It's a, it's a combination of white wine, water, um, rapeseed oil, sugar, star anise, um, a little bit of uh, fresh orange and fresh orange juice. Because you're going to have quite a rich richness of the pork belly, uh, sorry, the pork loin on the um, the peas pudding. Yeah. So you just want to try and cut that through with the acidity of the baby carrots. Right. So you've got a star anise that goes in there, and this lovely coloured rapeseed oil. Yeah, it's beautiful sugar. rapeseed oil. That's going in. Now, how's Rockcliffe Hall going? Because very busy last time you were here. Yeah, it's going really well. The hotel is nearly two years old. Um, yeah. Lots of lots has happened since then. Obviously, the hotel's up for a lot of awards, spa awards, hotel of the year, and we're now in the process because they've been so busy. We're looking to redevelop a, a new brasserie concept with within the hotel. Yeah, and uh, that should go live at the end of August. So this is uh, this is as well as the restaurant that you've got. This is as well as the restaurant. So it's going to act as a spin-off to the Orangery. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it's going to be called uh, Brasserie by Atkinson. Not like a you know, and backside or anything. <laughs> Brasserie by Atkinson. Yeah. Okay. It's just going to be a, a simplified version of what we try to do in the Orangery. Yeah. It's just because the demand is there. You know, we can't fit everybody in the restaurant. So yeah. We thought um, you know the, the directors and the owners thought it'd be a good idea, and um, that goes live in uh, August. So right. for the peas pudding, yeah. lots of butter, sweat of the schlots, the garlic, the smoked streaky bacon, and with because of the amount of butter I've got in there, chicken stock or ham stock. Yeah. And we're going to reduce that down really slowly so the butter and the stock emulsify. So you yeah. get a lovely thick peas pudding. Do you want to, I'll give you a new chicken board. I'll do Kenny, you've soaked, you've soaked them uh, the dry peas. Yeah, yeah definitely. You've got to soak them overnight. If you don't, you'll, you'll get a grainy and chewy texture. There you go. Sorry. Cheers. So those are the split peas. And how long do you cook these for then? If I'm doing a stove, I'll probably do it for about half an hour. Just slowly reduce down. Keep stirring it every so often until the, the butter and the stock emulsify together. Right. And we, is that always cooked the same, exactly like that? Yeah, I'll do it. it. I think it's if you do it on a stove, you've got more control over it. You can put a lid on it, do it in the oven, take a bit longer, but. This way you can keep an eye on it and just keep stirring like risotto until it all absorbs. Right, we've got the peas going in here. Yeah. So there you go. Going in with a, just a touch of milk. 
just a touch of milk. Just you want you don't want a, a, a wet pure. You want quite a thick, thick texture. Right. So you can use it as a bit of a. So you tell me when. A bit more liquid. A bit more liquid. Right. That enough? Yeah, get it going. So I don't need to touch that pot, you just literally pop it in. Yeah, Tom, I'll bring it out, a bit of butter, a bit of rosemary, yeah. and a little bit of lemon. That should be about it. Should be all right? Yeah, it should be all right. Keep so, going. that's got mint in there as well, you've got a nice mint flavour. Yeah, you want to really freshen the dish up. So, now we've cooked this one this morning. So, as you can see, James, it's reduced quite thick. Yeah. And I'm just going to finish that with a little bit of chopped parsley just to freshen it up. Give you that. Gently. Move that out of the way. There you go. So this is the reason why you use these frozen peas as well, isn't it? The colour. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's just. I think with fresh peas, it's lovely to use fresh peas, but I just don't think you get the same flavour that you do with the frozen peas. Yeah. So just give it a bit of a stir. Right, and don't forget the all today's studio recipes, including this one from Kenny, are on our website. Go to bbc.co.uk forward slash stuff in the kitchen. You'll find the kitchen. Don't worry, nobody, nobody <laughs> noticed that. <laughs> Carry on, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, uh, this is for our previous shows at bbc.co.uk forward slash recipes. We'll edit that bit out. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. What do you reckon? A bit of salt in there? Yeah, a little bit of salt, a little bit of seasoning. Right. And then we're ready to rock and roll. Right. So, I'll basically pass this. It's quite thin at first, but I'm assuming when you pass it... Yeah, obviously when it cools down slightly as well, it'll thicken a little bit as well. Yeah. Is this a dish you have on the menu, Kenny, is it? It's a dish we've had a simplified version, obviously, um, a while ago, but it's going to be on the, the new Brasier menu. Obviously, we'll, we'll be a bit of mashed potato on there, a bit of red wine sauce to try and make it more of a, a man-sized portion. Right. So you're saying this peas pudding is often served cold? Do you just serve it like that? Well, if I was going to serve it cold, James, I'd, I'd use the yellow split peas, you know. Yeah. It, so I think it's, it's, it's more of a, a nicer texture for it to be served cold. Doing a hot one, I tend to use the green split peas, so it's almost like a, a posh, mushy peas, really. Right. A posh, mushy peas. Posh, mushy peas. Well, that's your puree. I don't know whether that's... It's a bit wet. But it's a bit wet. We'll get by. We'll get by. We'll get by with that. There's your okay. carrots. Okay. Now, you obviously watch the show. You obviously know that I like my butter. We've got a letter. Oh, come on. No, this is a letter. It's a genuine letter. Look. It's a genuine letter to you. Oh, to so me? It's written in, yeah. On, uh, on this, that was last Saturday's show, which was a while back, you took the mick out of Kenny's small whisk. <laughs> Please. Is, that, is that from my wife? <laughs> no, no, this is... <laughs> Please find enclosed a small whisk... Oh, you're joking. That, that, ..that is one that's even better than Kenny's own. She actually thought it was your whisk. Where's it? Yeah. Before you fall, have, fall about have, laughing in hysterics, please try it. By the way... I don't want the whisk in return for a recipe for a real Italian ice cream with white variety. You're unable to find this anywhere. I'll send you it. Because she sent you. Gee, yeah, you know it is, right? I come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> this is not me. This is genuine. <laughs> it's a genuine viewer. <laughs> My little boys are big on them, aren't you? <laughs> Can We've actually got loads in the back. We've got a golf club that goes <laughs> as well, like little ones. <laughs> right, what have we got in here then? Right, so I've got the peas pudding. Yep. Some fresh parsley. <laughs> you can take that home with you. I'm going to take it home. <laughs> yeah, I'll take it home for the kids for the doll's house. <laughs> right, now that's had seven minutes, that pork. Yeah. So the pork tenderloin I'm just going to pull out. And then now all I'm going to do is get a little bit more butter in there. Yeah. See, it wasn't me. You were thought I was going to say something then, but you, that was a viewer. <laughs> so you can't criticise me now. There you go. <laughs> a little sprig of rosemary. <laughs> and then just a little bit of lemon juice. So, get that. Like you said earlier, lemon juice just brings things to life so, so well. Yeah. Looks delicious, that, though, doesn't it? Yeah. So, so we're going to use this one? Yeah. Um, we can try. Ideally, I'd let it rest for a good five yeah. minutes. I got one cooked earlier, but we'll try, we'll try and go for it. The thing Sorry. is, you can serve it pink now. You know, pork's not like it was... What's with this section? <laughs> you <break it. laughs> pork's not like what it used to be, you know, you can not serve a slightly pink, you know, you're not going to get worms. I think nowadays a lot more farmers are uh, a lot more careful of what the hell yeah. look after the, the products. And you've got some cracking pork now, so yeah. a little bit of pink is, is great, you know, I've got no problem with that. Right. So we're going to paint this up a little bit differently. You've just got to make sure it's from a definite good source. That's definite good source, yeah. exactly. Okay. Quality supplier. So, nice spoonful of... Pea's pudding. On the side. It smells lovely, can you? Thanks, mate. Get some lovely baby colours. I don't know how many knives I'm going to use. Actually, I'll leave them whole. There you go. That's nice. There you go. So we're going to see if it's, if it's cooked. 
Yeah, it's a little bit pink. You're going to use that one, yeah? Yeah, I think it would be safer. Yeah. There you go. It's better. A little bit of salt. That's good. On top of the peas pudding. Little pea shoots. Little pea shoots. A few little baby carrots. These are the ones that's in the pickle with a little bit of Lately tarragon in there as well. Exactly, yeah. And just on top like that. And pea shoots. Just like the salad over. Pick that stalky bit off. And then to finish, a little bit of rapeseed oil over the top. And there you go. That is what that's again? That is my pan roasted pork tenderloin fillet with my northeast peas pudding, pickled carrots, and fresh pea shoots. And a present. There and you a go. present. Thank you very Thank much. You <laughs> It wasn't me, it wasn't me. You can can, I, have a, can I have that letter, please? <laughs> no, there, you go. Yeah. there you go. Have a seat over there. Dive into that. Tell us what you think of that one. And i tell you what, that would be great with chicken as well. As well with chicken, nice lamb. Pork chop and oh, that yeah. Well, it's, traditionally, you've a piece put instead of a pork anyway, but you can yeah. serve it with lamb, serve it with beef if you wanted to. Yeah, but like I say, a nice chicken would be lovely with it. Yeah. The man's mm. a genius. Yeah. That's delicious. It is delicious, isn't it? And bear in mind, I'm saying that despite the fact you've chosen food hell for me. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, he dives into that. We're going to try and convert you. We're going to try and convert you. Well, he dives into that. Let's go yeah. back to Newport, see what Susie has chosen to go with.